right, we're out here at Heritage Farm Park doing another course review. This is one of my first ever courses I ever played. I'm really excited about it, so let's get into it. Here we go. So this course is a little bit different than some other ones that we're going to take a look at because this one's pretty basic, you know, it's not very hard. This is where I learned how to play disc golf a couple of years ago. Um, so it's not going to be the highest score in the world, but, you know, I still feel pretty good about it. I think it's not under a five or anything like that, but it's still like pretty simple. It's good though. You need to have some variety in whatever area you're in. So. Okay, so we're halfway through the course now. I think the one thing that this place struggles with is like, it's kind of samey. Uh, a lot of the shots are similar, but I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. This isn't really trying to be a pro level course. It's kind of meant for beginners, you know, learning how to play. So I think they're achieving what they're trying to do well, but it's not somewhere that, it's not like a destination place that you're gonna wanna go to to like have a really fun, cool round of everything.
Okay, so we tried to throw on a couple of tee pads through the back nine. It's been a little bit slow here. Can't fault the course, obviously, but it kind of sucks for me a little bit. Um, we're going to hole 19 now. There's 20 holes out here, and the long tee just doesn't exist right now. So we're going to have to play off the shore, but it's okay. It'll be fine. So it's gonna do it here. Pretty good round, I would have to say. Um, you know, I have a lot of sentimental value for this course. I can admit that it's not the best ever, uh, but you know, for all of the amazing courses that we're gonna go review, we gotta have some that are like kind of in between. Uh, but regardless, I had a lot of fun out here. So let's go into the booth and review this thing. Here we go. All right, y'all, I hope you enjoyed watching the round, but now we gotta rate this thing. So let's start getting into that. First up, we got the tee pads. They're made out of concrete at this course, but they're a little bit short at times, I would say. You know, for me, somebody that has a bit of a longer run, I'm always pretty much gonna start off of the tee pad, but I find it nice when you have a shorter hole or if there's a lot of mud or snow or something like that, like there was when we were out there, it can be kind of nice to have the option to step onto the tee pad and not get your feet really wet and then potentially slip. Also, some of these tee pads are kind of off a little bit. There's like cracks in them. They kind of lip on the edges a little bit. So sometimes they're prone to slipping. And I did that a, uh, a, a few times in my day. You know, they're not, they're definitely not the worst tee pads that are out there, but there could be a little bit more consistency with some of them. They're obviously, they've been there for a little while, so they've been worn down. But for the tee pads, I'm gonna give them a six out of 10, not bad. Okay, for the signs, the signs are kind of disappointing out here, to be honest. You know, they, they're very minimalist. They don't show very much. They have the little numbers on them and then they have the distances for each hole, but sometimes the distance can be a little bit inconsistent by a little more, a little less, depending. So it's nice to, you know, be able to trust what the T sign says. So you don't have to like pull out a rangefinder or something to really figure it out if you're trying to get to the nitty gritty. Also, they're not really on every hole. There is a T pad every hole. Let me rephrase that, but for some of the different tees that you have, like over at the blue tees, sometimes there won't be a sign there. So you have to actually walk over to where the short pad is to find out how far the hole is, which is kind of annoying. But what are you gonna do? I think really the only thing saving the signs is like the little names that they give the holes. I think that's pretty cute. So, you know, that's that's really the one thing I got going for them. And I like how they're stylized. I think they look kind of nice. But other than that, there's not much there. But like I said, they got saved a little bit with how cool they, they do look with the core, so I'm gonna give them a four out of 10. Okay, so the baskets. The baskets of this course, I personally really don't like. They have stiffed me quite a few times during league and taken me out of getting some money, so I appreciate that from them. This course has Mach 2s. They're all over the place. A lot of courses have them. They spit out a lot and you'll get spit backs all the time because the chains are really light, especially with some of the new ones that they've had to put in recently from broken tee pads. Those ones do not grab very well because they're so new and the chains are so light. It just doesn't really work out very well. Now with this course, there's a lot of people that are newer that are coming to play, so it doesn't necessarily matter. And a lot of people that are actually throwing lids, uh, ultimate discs, out there and obviously these catch pretty well for those so you know there's a little bit of an upside like based on what this course is they don't really need those high level baskets but i would really personally appreciate them because you know the course is really close to where i live so it'd be nice to have somewhere to go with nice dependable baskets like that but for these i'm going to give them a four out of ten for the baskets do better please all right, so now the fairways. This one's a little bit weird because, you know, it's a really open place. The fairways aren't necessarily defined. It's not like a woods course. You know, the fairways are obviously good. There's nothing really in the ways of them. There's not a lot of trees or stuff like that in your way on this course. They do come into play a little bit of the time, but you know, the fairways are obviously 
they're right there in front of you. It's hard to miss. The one thing I will say is that, you know, the fairways are really close to each other on some places because it's a small area. Again, you can't really fault the designers for that. It's a small space. You gotta do what you can. Sometimes you throw into a different fairway and you're like still good to go. So they're not necessarily the most defined things in the world, but that's all right. I, I think they're, they're fine. They're solid. They do what they're meant to do. I'm gonna give them a seven out of 10. Rough. So this is one place that this course really struggles with. Obviously, again, it's a public park. It's way out in the open. There's not much going on here in terms of throwing a bad shot and getting punished for it, which I personally think is really important for the game. You don't want to reward players for throwing bad. Um, like I was saying, throwing into a different fairway and you're fine. There is a couple times where you're going along a wood line and you know there's potential to go in there and it's pretty bad for a few holes um, within this course. So there's a little bit of that, but for the most part, I would say the rough is kind of non-existent to a point. When it is there, it is used well and I appreciate it for what it does. There's even one hole, I think it's number six, you have to throw uh, over out of bounds, so that's nice too. So yeah, for the rough, um, it, it, they can't really do much about it. So I'm just gonna give it a three out of 10 difficulty. So this one might seem a little weird when I say it, but I actually really like the difficulty of this course because it's doing what it wants to do well. Kind of like I mentioned in the uh, in the round there. This is meant to be an easy course, meant to be friendly for beginners. It's, you know, a really, relaxed, chill time. We're throwing some ace runs out there. It's a good time. It's not meant to be like a super hard pro level course. And you know, I think it knows that. I think it's trying to achieve that. I think for what it's trying to do, it's doing it really well. So for the difficulty, I'm actually gonna give it an eight out of 10. The views, obviously the most important and uh, respected of the categories in this list. So this place obviously, like I said a million times, public park, not much to look at for some playgrounds, probably some like screaming kids or something running around. So there's that, I guess. But there's also some farms. If you look out into the horizon a little bit, there's also uh, some livestock or some horses or ponies, something. One of the holes is named after him. It's hole three. So if you want to go back and look at what that one is called, it's something after a pony. But there's, there's some horses there. So that's cool to look at, I guess. Overall, it's really nothing special. It's nothing to write home about. You know, it's just, it, it does the job. It's got some cool sunsets like you saw in the video. So, you know, I'm going to give this a six out of 10. Not too bad. Variety. This course struggles with that a little bit. Like I talked about really open. It's really short. I do find with the long pads, it's nice because you do kind of filter through every kind of disc, your mids, your putters, your approaches, your, your distance, your fairways. You can have the option of throwing all of them. And, and one of the things with being a big course, a big open course is that you have a lot of choices to throw at every hole, right? It's not like begging you to throw one exact line, which I guess is an advantage of being so open. If you really wanna shoot well and kinda of get baited into just like playing easy, you can really just like choose a couple discs out of your bag and then be perfectly fine on this course. So for variety, I'm gonna give this course a four out of 10 because it's so short. Next up is flow. I mean, not much to say about this one. It's, it's in a nice compact space, so you know, you finish at a hole and it's gonna lead you right next to the next tee. I mean, you're, you're barely walking. Sometimes you have to walk a little, kind of backtrack a little bit, I guess, or, or walk out of the way to get to the long pad. But yeah, there's one basket per hole, dumps you out at the tee, pretty good. I'm gonna give it an eight out of 10 for the flow. Okay, and finally, replayability. This is kind of a mixture of everything we've talked about so far. I mean, uh, this course obviously doesn't have a ton of variety, which kind of hurts it a little bit uh, in the replayability side. There's two different lengths of tee pads. Obviously the ones I play with the longs and the short pad. There's only one set of baskets per hole, which kind of limits a little bit of, you know, what you can do, uh, the different kinds of styles you're gonna play. But for me, I would appreciate if there was a little bit more options in terms of, you know, the lines that you're looking at to the different holes. A lot of the times with the longs, it's really just backing up the tee pad ever so slightly. You're moving it a little bit off the left, a little bit off the right, but it doesn't really drastically change what you're doing. You might disc up. Some of the time you don't. The longs are there. I guess they, they help a little bit, but it's not really effectively changing your experience very much going there. So it's almost as if there's only one layout here. But with all things considered, I'm gonna give replayability a respectable six out of 10, a little bit above average because it has all those options. And that's all of it. So we gotta give this thing a rating. I will say, I do love this course. I, It's very sentimental to me. I've put in a lot of rounds there. I think it might still be my most played round with my U-Disc, which is 
weird. So for Heritage Farm Park, for this course review, I am going to give it a 5.6. I think that's pretty respectable for what it is. I, I thought about it. I changed a couple numbers around a few times and I feel like that is a good number that suits this course, especially going from such a good course the last time. It's nice coming and playing a little bit of an easier course that, you know, does what it wants to do pretty well. It's really nice for the local leagues out here because it's a nice chill experience. Whenever this pops up out of our rotation, I'm always excited to go play because I know I'm going to have a good time with everybody out there. And yeah, man, just so many people come out to this course. I know a lot of people go out and learn and have their first rounds out here. So, uh, you know, if you're ever in the area and you want to go play it, I would definitely advise it, especially if you're more of a beginner, lower intermediate type of player. It was a, a treat to get back out there and record another video for you guys. I've been having so much fun putting together content. Again, it feels so good. I really love it. And I want to thank you guys for the support over the last two videos, especially that first course review. That thing blew up a lot more than I thought it would, but I'm going to keep churning out all the content if you guys keep coming and watching it. It really helps and supports me and what I want to do. But yeah, one more time, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you could take one moment to like and subscribe to the video, come back for more. New videos are out every single Friday, new course review every other week. So keep an eye out. Let me know what course I should go and review next. If you got one that you really love and you want to see me just dog on, that would be good. I would love to do that for you. I got you. All right, guys. Well, you know, I think I missed a little too many putts in this video, so I'm going to go get some practice in and you definitely should too. Uh, but thanks for coming out and I'll see you guys next time. Peace, homies.